Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to look at image filters for desktop. There are so many images in Design Space and you can put in a search parameter and you can literally get back thousands of images. And the filters are really good for narrowing that search down. So the first thing we're obviously going to do is go into images. And you see we've got all these filters down the side here, but before we look at them, we're going to look at categories because categories are really good and they're underused quite a lot. So if we go to category at the top here and we just select all images, it will bring us to a screen that looks like this. And you'll see we've got all of these different categories and then they've got their own subcategories. So we've got highlighted categories with featured, recently added, free this week, image sets. Then there's occasions, themes, trending, people and places and shapes. So for example, if we go to occasions and we go to holidays and I select that. So all of the images that are now showing are all to do with holidays. So they've all been categorized as holiday images. And if we look down this side of our screen, as well as our other filters, we've now got subcategories of the holiday filter. So 4th of July, Canada Day, Christmas, Day of the Dead, Diwali, Earth Day. And of course we can view more. There's a lot more in there. So if for example, I select Christmas, it's now going to narrow that down even further to actual Christmas images that are in that holiday category. And then of course I can go even further with the filters which we'll go through in a minute. I can go back up to category, select holidays and it'll take me back to that page. And then of course I can choose more categories. This is really underused. A lot of people, myself included, go straight into images and then stay on that first page. The only time I really come in here is to do image sets or to see what's free this week. Highlighted categories is my most used. But one of my New Year's resolutions, believe it or not, was that I would start using this a lot more because what it does is it narrows down our image search dramatically. So rather than just searching for duck, if I go into Christmas or nature or even children and I type in duck, I'm going to get different images because they're going to be specific to that category. So it's well worth playing with these because sometimes your image results are just crazy. So if you can reduce them down a little bit, it's worth using these. I'm going to go back to browse all images and we're going to look at our categories down this side here. So of course, if we select a, an actual category, we get a subcategory. If we're in all images, we just get these. So we don't get any subcategories. So we can filter between free and saved. We've then got operation type. So we've got cut only, draw only, print then cut and cut and draw. These are really useful and I use this filter a lot. A lot of the time I like to draw or foil or deboss or engrave using single line files. I'm not a big fan unless I'm doing uh, metallic pens or a chunkier pen or I'm going to colour in. I'm not a big fan of doing those things with the double lines. So if I want to use either foil or a pen or deboss or engrave, I will always select draw only so that I get those single line images come up. Print and cut, another good one, although if I'm doing print and cut, I will normally select print then cut and cut only because quite often with the cut only ones, you can still turn them to print and cut because you just need to flatten them. So you can change the colors on them, especially if they're multi-layered. So if I want to create a print and cut, I will choose print and cut and I'll do cut only because I can change those to a print and cut. If I know that I want to do something like a card, I want to create a card, then I normally do cut and draw, especially if I'm going to create something like an insert card. So those operation types are really super handy and it's well worth getting in the swing of using those. The next filter is layers, so you can choose single layer images or multi-layer images. We've then got project type. 
I don't tend to use this one. You can change the project so it's bringing up images that are selected for those projects. So 3D cards, phrases. A lot of the images can be used across the board. So I tend to use the operation type more than the project type. But if you wanted specific card images, so for example, you wanted to find insert card images that will work, then obviously select the card project type and you'll get a lot more images directed towards working with cards. Next, we've got material again. A lot of the images can be multi-material, but these are good for actually templates as well. So for example, if I select chipboard, it'll come up with a lot of jigsaw templates for the chipboard, which you don't always find by typing things in like chipboard or jigsaw. So actually using the material filter brings up projects specifically for that material, which can be slightly difficult to find if you're using the image search. So it's well worth using the material type and you'll find that you do get a more selective view of images. Next, we've got language. This is really helpful. Design Space in the last few years has really ramped up its different languages. So there's so many images now in multi-language formats, which I think is fantastic. So we've got so many here, Chinese, American Sign Language, German, Hebrew, Italian, Korean, Russian. Really cool. I mean, some of them are really lovely as well. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes if you click the three dots, it will tell you what it's actually saying in English. So for example, this one is welcome in Italian. And this one is I love you in Italian. Not all of them have that in English, but it's worth checking so you actually know what you're putting if you don't speak that language. Next we have ownership, so purchased or uploaded. So if you've purchased images or image sets, you can change the ownership to purchased and it will bring up all your purchased images. Equally, if you select uploaded, it will just bring you up all your uploaded images. You can filter to available offline. So any images that you have downloaded, you can select the downloaded filter and it will bring just those up. And then we have licensed content. So here in the UK, we've just started getting some licensed content. So we've got some Warner Brothers licensed content. So you can select that and it'll bring up just those images. Hopefully in the future, we'll start to see more, but the Warner Brothers ones are lovely. We've had some really nice ones so far, including Friends and Harry Potter, which is very exciting. It's well worth using the filters, especially the category filters. Those are invaluable because you really are reducing your image search right down. So it's definitely worth using the category filter and then filtering even further if you need to. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, make sure you click that notification bell. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.